Welcome everyone. I'm Jennifer Faden from the National Schools Observatory. I'm going to be talking about our STEM club initiative and how we're building clubs in areas of England with high areas of socioeconomic disadvantage. I'll also talk about how we're evaluating the project and how our work with schools has reacted to the COVID-19 pandemic. For those who are not familiar with the term, when I say STEM, I'm talking about an approach to learning and development that integrates the areas of science, technology, engineering and math. I'll talk about our project in further detail in a moment, but first, a brief introduction to who the National Schools Observatory are to put our work in context. The National Schools Observatory, or NSO, is part of the Astrophysics Research Institute at Liverpool John Moores University. The department owns and operates the Liverpool Telescope, which is a two-metre fully robotic telescope located on La Palma in the Canary Islands. The National Schools Observatory was launched in 2004 and connects schools to the Liverpool Telescope so that they can request their own observations remotely in a straightforward way and without breaking the telescope. We use the inspirational topic of space to engage and empower young people to get more involved in STEM subjects. We do this through the NSO website, so anyone can register at schoolsobservatory.org to use the telescope and access our wide range of activities. We have a wide range of observing programmes, so schools can observe the moon, planets in our solar system, or even galaxies beyond our own. So a question the NSO is continually trying to answer in a variety of ways is how to raise aspirations and awareness of opportunities to study and work in STEM fields. Those from socially disadvantaged groups are consistently underrepresented in science and engineering, particularly in senior roles. So part of the change needs to start with interventions while young people are in school particularly before students make subject choices that influence their future. And in the UK, these choices often take place before the age of 16. So this project um, is part of a response to that question. And the project is using astronomy to create STEM clubs in schools in low science capital areas. And it's part funded by the UK Research and Innovations Science and Technologies Facilities Council. I'm just gonna clarify what I mean by STEM clubs and what I mean by science capital. So STEM clubs are extracurricular clubs that traditionally take place after school or otherwise outside of lesson time. And they involve activities themed around science, engineering, technology, and maths in a fun and informal way. They may be run by a science teacher, but often more likely to be run by a technician or teaching assistant. The benefits of STEM clubs include enriching and broadening the curriculum outside the confines of what children must learn within lessons. They give young people the opportunity to encounter new topics and develop their own interests. They also have the benefit of um, opportunities to boost confidence, improve social and teamwork skills, as well as developing STEM skills and the love of STEM topics. And for staff, there's the benefit of maybe trialing activities um, that then could later be incorporated into lessons or trialing new approaches to teaching STEM. The concept of science capital was developed by researchers at the Institute of Education at University College London. Science capital incorporates an individual's science related knowledge, attitudes, experiences and resources that they build up throughout their life. So what they know about science, what they think about science, who they know and talk to about science and what they do outside of school that's linked to science. And science capital is been shown to be one way to assess how likely it is that young people will aspire to study science in the future. So in this project we're using the idea of science capital as a method to assess that we're reaching the intended target audience. The aims of this project are to set up and support STEM clubs in disadvantaged areas across the UK. So that's a positive influence on attitudes towards STEM within the schools. And the most important thing, to create a simple, manageable route for other similar schools to start their own STEM clubs. In terms of evaluating the project, so at AIM1, um, we're collecting quantitative data and we've developed a survey produced in conversation with researchers at UCL to measure the science capital of the students involved. To evaluate project AIM2, we have built this evaluation around our own internal evaluation framework, which is based on a set of generic learning outcomes. For this project, we're focusing our evaluation on effects on participants' feelings and behaviour towards science. These STEM clubs are designed to promote participants to feel empowered to do science and inspired to find out more. Um, 
they're not designed to specifically increase understanding or skills, so that might occur. And the third aim, um, this will take time really to see if the what schools we work with will continue to offer clubs and um, past our intervention and it'll take time for us to gather data on the number of schools in socioeconomically deprived areas who request um, our STEM club, request to use our STEM clubs in the future. Um, but we can evaluate this partly through um, whether we produce a successful case study, present at conferences, share our findings. And the intention is that through this project, we create a self-contained package for schools to use to um, start STEM clubs. So we want to overcome any barriers that schools may face to doing so. And barriers to schools starting a STEM club can include lack of staff time, lack of staff confidence or knowledge in the subject, and the burden of having to find fun activities to engage the students with week after week. So to support schools to overcome these barriers, we've produced a suite of STEM club booklets themed around the inspirational topic of space. And the main goal of this project will be to understand how well these resources support schools and reduce those barriers. So we've got two sets of booklets, one aimed at pupils aged seven to 11. This is a key age for inspiring young people in the topic and preventing misconceptions about science only being for certain types of people. Second set is for students aged 11 to 16. This is a time when many people, um, many young people get turned off science just when they're making decisions about what they will choose to study and do in their futures. There's also a detailed leader booklet. This is a really key to overcoming the barrier of lack of competent staff. The leader booklet has been written for non-specialists. In it, we've put in all the subject knowledge and facilities facilitation information needed so that a club session could be run by a teaching assistant, a parent, or even an older student. So in this project, we want to um, assess how well we've already helped schools overcome these barriers, um, better understand any additional barriers, um, and then improve uh, the resources so that they can be um, sent out to similar schools in the future as an independent standalone resource without our additional support needed. In terms of targeting areas of the UK, we set out to reach schools who weren't already engaging with the NSO and that were in socially economically deprived areas of the UK. We started off um, focusing our efforts just on the nation of England and used government data on deprivation that was last published in 2019. We ended up deciding on um, two areas, Knowsley in the northwest of England and Middlesbrough in the northeast of England. In terms of the proportion of children living in income deprived households, um, Nosley has the third highest percentage in England and Middlesbrough is the first highest percentage. Both areas also have higher than average populations of working age adults with no educational qualifications. Also in Nosley, um, there is no A-level provision in the local authority. A-levels are a qualification that students sit age 18 in England, and it's the main qualification that leads to university. These are the areas we are currently working with. Building relationships with schools in those areas and getting signed on um, to engage with our project, um, it, 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 it's often challenging to engage schools. We didn't have much staff time funded through the project, so we reached out to our networks to find contacts in those areas with local knowledge who could advise us which schools were in need of the resources and which schools would be able to engage with our project. Um, and this has worked really well in Middlesbrough. We've met, made some really great um, networks there. Knowsley in the northwest of England is actually next door to where we are, next door to Liverpool. Um, and even though it's our next door neighbour, it's surprisingly harder to engage with, but it's been really good to learn this and increasing the engagement with schools in Knowsley is going to be a target we build into our future wider activities. In Knowsley, we have been able to connect teachers um, at a local level in different schools, and they're going to use our clubs to support pupils in the transition from primary to secondary schools, which takes place in England when they're around 11 years old. The Middlesbrough um, schools that we're working with includes a school for children with severe learning difficulties, and they want um, their pupils to be able to um, join in with this project along with their partner schools. So they're going to adapt our materials for their pupils because working um, with schools 
that specifically cater for children with um, special needs was outside the scope of this project, but it is part of our ongoing strategy. So we're really excited that this school um, wants to take on um, the additional project of adapting these resources. I'm really looking forward to what comes out of it and what we learn from them. So it's um, a real bonus for this project so far. So um, the project started in October 2020. Um, so during COVID-19 pandemic, we began re reaching out to schools around November 2020. Since October 2020, England has had two national lockdowns. During the first one, schools stayed open. During the second one, they closed, but they had to provide education to all pupils throughout. Um, so we've been really surprised and pleased with how keen the schools have been to start their STEM clubs, despite these changing circumstances. There's a real desire to offer new opportunities for the students and work around um, the difficult uh, circumstances. The schools in England still can't have visitors, so um, we've been using Zoom, um, and perhaps in some cases it's made it easier for teachers to meet with us and connect with us. People have got used to having virtual meetings, and it's easier to facilitate a short training session than get schools to sort of book their staff off for a half day of training. So in some ways it's made it easier to connect. The schools are going to do their STEM clubs in single year group bubbles to carry on um, making sure they are uh, uh, safe. Um, sessions haven't been written for virtual clubs, so it's good that schools are able to um, get the children into school and use these clubs safely with them. And the schools are also going to be using the clubs to support their pupils to get back to normal. A couple of the schools in Middlesbrough are going to um, connect virtually via Zoom to offer their uh, pupils chances to interact and share what, what they've been doing, which they haven't really been able to do over the last year. And one school is going to use the activities as part of a recovery curriculum to reintroduce pupils to science skills, teamwork and problem solving. And we hope to visit when we can. So going forward, we will continue to support schools in England. I'm going to start to expand the project into the other UK nations of Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. We've learned that reaching out to networks for expert local advice has been invaluable for reducing staff time trying to connect with schools in those areas new to us. And in terms of working during a global crisis, schools have been responding to the pandemic with amazing flexibility and focusing on the opportunities that are there. At the NSO, we're really excited to see our activities promoting a love of STEM and raising aspirations get put into schools. And we'll continue to share what comes out of it with the outreach and public engagement community. Thank you very much, everybody. <laughs>